What's up, you guys? Welcome to Sector for Nerds, and welcome to Star Wars Retro Discussions. I'm Ryan Brower, and today we're here to chat about Star Wars The Clone Wars Season 1, Episode 1, Ambush. In case you've been living under a rock, I am starting a new series here on my channel talking about all the episodes of Star Wars The Clone Wars. Eventually, we'll go through other shows as well, like Star Wars Rebels, we'll talk about The Clone Wars Micro Series, all that stuff. Last week, we talked about The Clone Wars movie, and that was sort of our prologue to The Clone Wars animated series. But this is kind of like the official starting point, you know what I'm saying? This is episode one of the show, and I'm very excited to get into it today, you guys. Make sure you guys like this video and subscribe to the channel. At the time of this recording, I'm trying to reach a thousand subscribers, so if you guys can help me reach that goal, it would be greatly appreciated. I also have another YouTube channel called Top 10 Character Moments. Highly recommend you subscribe there as well. If you guys missed last week's discussion about the Clone Wars movie, highly recommend that you guys go and check it out. I usually create playlists for all my stuff, like for all my videos that sort of go together. So I'm definitely going to be creating one for this series. So make sure you guys are checking out that playlist, especially for people who are watching this in the future. It'll be a great way to keep up with all the videos, especially because by the end of it, there's going to be a lot of them. Now, another thing that people might ask is, well, Ryan, interesting that you've decided to go about things in the order of which it was released. You know, there is a chronological order out there. And I would say, yes, you're right. I know there's a chronological order out there. I know this because I've watched through the Clone Wars in chronological order multiple times over. But I thought, you know what, if this is going to be a retro discussion, a show that is over, what, 15 years old at this point, and for those watching in the future, it could be even older, but I feel like we have to do this in the way it was released, right? And talking about my thoughts on the episode, what I thought about them growing up as a kid, and then compared to watching them now. So let's get into our discussion, you guys. I'm going to make the intros a little bit shorter going forward so we can get like right into the episodes but I also kind of figure like we're kind of this is kind of like our official starting point so let me kind of like sort of introduce you guys into what's going on and, and how we're going to go about things right every week there's going to be a new episode presumably on Mondays that is always subject to change but I'll always keep you guys posted ahead of time I'm going to be giving you guys my thoughts on each and every episode of the Clone Wars we might even do separate episodes talking about like different things regarding the Clone Wars that I feel strongly about like what I how I felt when the Clone Wars was canceled or what other arcs we could have gotten in the Clone Wars and should have gotten that I would very much love to talk about. We're going to have a lot of different discussions you guys and this is going to be a multi-year journey with this show that I take and I'm I'm so excited to begin this journey. I think it's also ironic that I began this show. Now this wasn't planned, but at the time of this recording there is a writer strike going on right now in Hollywood. So a lot of things Things are being postponed, things that are being pushed back. So it feels like there's going to be a significant amount of time where we may not be getting as much new content. And I feel like in this day and age, I feel like we as fans can be kind of spoiled at times because we'll see a show or movie and go, oh, great, this is cool, but what's next? And I feel, and not that it's necessarily a bad thing, it's very natural for us to think this way with all of the content that we get. But I think there's a great opportunity to go back and, and talk about about content from the past that we know and love. And especially for me as someone who absolutely loves and adores the Clone Wars, it's like one of my favorite TV shows ever, like that in Star Wars Rebels as well. I'm very passionate about those two shows. I love them so much. They were important parts of my childhood. They're important parts of me now. So what better time to go back and talk about them? And again, that wasn't planned because I've had this series in development for like months before the writer strike even began. So I know I keep saying we're going to get into the episode, you guys. So let's get into the episode itself. In case you guys missed it last week, I brought in a narrator to do my intros. Now, whether or not you guys like him, I don't know. I thought he did a good job for the first episode with the Clone Wars movie. When I say narrated intros, I'm talking about the Tom Kane intros that we get at the start of each episode because I can't get Tom Kane to do it of course so I brought in a guy he don't get paid he don't get much so he just comes in says his thing and then leaves so I thought you know what let's bring him back for another week let's see if you guys like him and yeah narrated intro guy take it away a galaxy divided by war peaceful worlds must choose sides or face the threat of invasion Republican separatist armies vie for the allegiance of neutral planets, desperate to build a republic supply based on the system of Toydaria. Jedi Master Yoda travels to secret negotiations, 
on a remote neutral moon. Fun fact about that intro, that's one of the only Clone Wars intros that I actually remember like off the top of my head that I can recite word for word without looking it up. Now, the place where these negotiations are being held is the remote moon of Toydaria, right? I don't think it was actually the planet Toydaria, but it was one of its moons. We get to meet the Toydarians. We meet King Katunko. Uh, for those who don't know what a Toydarian is, just look back to the Phantom Menace and remember Watto. He was Anakin's, like, owner, right? And apparently mind tricks do not work on him, only money. Feel like that impression massively failed. Bear with me, guys. I'm a Toydarian. My tricks don't work on me, only money. But also thank you to narrated intro guy. I'm sorry, I forgot to say thank you. He was in and out so quickly, I didn't have a chance to say anything. But we start out with uh, King Katuko ends up meeting not Master Yoda, but someone else that's on the other side of the war, and that's Asajj Ventress. Voiced by Nika Futterman, who I praised very highly in the Clone Wars movie and talked about how I would have loved to uh, have her come back to voice Ventress in a arc called The Dark Disciple, which was supposed to be in The Clone Wars, and we can get more into that later, but I feel like she has massively owed that. A proper finish to Ventress's story. Now, whether or not she cares, I don't know. I'm sure she wouldn't say no. That's all I'm, that's all I'm saying. We then get a hologram of Count Dooku, right? Because the whole plot of this episode is that uh, Yoda hopes to go to Toydaria to help establish a Republic base in that system. In exchange, the Republic will give them protection. Because uh, we have to understand, right? Like, this is a war going on right now. So you need to try and make right, like, as many allies as you can get. You want to try and establish bases throughout the galaxy wherever you can. And Toydaria, it seems like, is one of those places. Now, Count Dooku is not voiced by Christopher Lee like it was in the Clone Wars movie. He is voiced by the wonderful and talented Cory Burton. Cory Burton voices many characters in the Clone Wars, one of which is Count Dooku. Another big one is Cad Bane, so you're going to see his name pop up a lot. The Republic falls into a trap, and of course, it causes them to launch all of their escape pods towards the surface. This was all Yoda idea because they're in like a smaller frigate like you see in the the start of the phantom menace and all of a sudden like two separatist frigates come out of hyperspace and start ambushing them it's a trap lol but meanwhile like dooku's trying to give like his pitch to king katuko right because he's he's trying to like be like hey you should join us instead of the republic like our droid armies outnumber the clones a hundred to one and King Katuko sort of defends the Jedi and the clones. He's like, well, I've heard that a single Jedi equals a hundred battle droids. And speaking of battle droids, you guys, I gotta shout out Matthew Wood, the voice of the battle droids. And he's also, Matthew Wood, a very important person when it comes to the production of, of Star Wars, especially like the sound design stuff. The battle droids in the Clone Wars are so funny, and especially in this episode. Little green life form, you fucking head. The Jedi. He is a little one. Yoda definitely had fun playing around with them as well. And I mean, he, there was a squad of battle droids that he went up against in this episode and he simply beat them by dodging. I'm not kidding. Yoda has to go up against the droid army because Ventress is like, well, you know what? If Yoda is the warrior that you believe he is talking to the king, let him prove it. If Yoda is able to withstand my army, join the Republic. But should we defeat him, then consider joining us instead. It is kind of weird, like, for me seeing Ventress be an advocate for the Separatists. Like, just knowing where her story goes, you know, a little bit of foreshadowing, right? Um, I won't get into it too heavy in case those who haven't seen it, but obviously spoilers are going to be fair game in these, especially for the episodes that we talk about. So, and plus the show is, like I said, it's over 15 years old at this point, over a decade old. I think spoilers are definitely fair game. But yeah, again, it's just weird seeing her in that role. And the droids call her Supreme Leader, which I had forgotten about that. I'm like, oh, they call her Supreme Leader. That's interesting. Because whenever I think of Supreme Leader, and I think one of a lot of us think of Supreme Leader, right? What are we all thinking? Snoke. Maybe that was like Ventress's rank, right? Is like Supreme Leader of the droid army. But Yoda is not alone in this episode. He has three clones backing him up as well. And we're going to get into those guys shortly, but... They sort of help Yoda defeat the droids, and Yoda kind of, like, coaches them throughout the episode because 
they'll be ready to attack. And Yoda's like, oh, don't worry, guys. Don't worry about attacking. We're not in range. And I'm obviously talking in a normal voice. Yoda obviously says his words backwards. But you guys, you guys get what I'm saying. Talk like this for a full episode, I cannot. Drive me crazy, it will. One of the things that I want to do when I talk about every one of these episodes is talk about the, the cookie right at the start of the episode. The message that you get, the, the sort of theme that you can get throughout the episode and what to take out of it, right? And that message at the start was, great leaders inspire greatness in others. Now, very uh, ironically, I remember Ahsoka saying that line to the Prince of Mon Cala in that opening arc of season four. And we'll get more into that when we talk about that episode. But when it comes to this episode, episode, great leaders inspiring greatness in others. I think that very much applies to Yoda and the clones. Yoda very much inspires these clones in this episode to sort of think outside of the box and when it is to help, when it is the time to defeat the enemy instead of rushing into things, right? Like the, like I said, the clones are ready to attack at the start when the, when the tanks start firing, but it was like, don't worry guys, we're not in range. You don't have to worry about it. And then the time comes later. All right, we got two patrols coming in on foot. Now's the time we face the enemy. I think it was very much one of those things where they sort of follow his example. And it's fun. I wish we would have seen more of these clones uh, throughout the Clone Wars, because I don't think we do really. But the clones, let me kind of get into their names, right? There's Reese, Jack, and Thire. And I believe Thire's a lieutenant. And one of the things that this episode will do so well is getting to know the clones on a personal level and starting to, to humanize them. Because the, before the Clone Wars, the clones, we were just like, all right, the, they're soldiers of the Republic. They're the Republic's army to do battle, right? And that's all there is to it. This show humanizes the clones and makes you care about them so much. And there's going to be certain clones that you care more about others, but like what this episode did was plant in the groundwork, right? Because Thyre even says, there's not much to look at, sir. We all share the same face. There's nothing really special about us, right? And Yoda's like, no, in the force, you're all very different. And he talks about the things, right? Like Reese, always focused on the enemy, are you? For inspiration, look to yourself and those around you. Jack, you're concerned about weapons. Weapons do not win battles. Your mind is powerful. You can outthink the enemy. Fire, rush not into fights. Long is the war. Only by surviving it we prevail. I love that. Yoda in these episodes is very much in high spirits. And I think that's something to keep in mind throughout, like as the Clone Wars goes on, as Yoda's demeanor does kind of change. But in this episode, like, he's happy, he's having fun, especially when he's, like, battling the droid army at the end of the episode, right? Like, he looks like he's having the time of his life. I do want to give a shout out to Jack again real quick, going back to the clones. That man was carrying a Z6 rotary blaster cannon and a rocket launcher. Like, he had the rocket launcher on his back, he had the, the Z6 in his hand. And I was like, dude, this dude is the man. Like, I would not be able to carry all that equipment. I could tell you that. Yoda also creates a crutch with Thyre's blaster. Like, when they're sitting in the cave having the conversation, thought that was pretty cool. We go up against all kind of enemies in this episode. There's the battle droids. There's the super battle droids. There's the droidicas, which uh, the Thyre calls rollies. He says, rollies inbound. Now, we know that the clones like to give droids different names, right? Like, they call them clankas. They call the, the battle droids. Clankas. So their nickname for the destroyers or the droidicas is Rollies. Though I feel like they call them destroyers throughout the Clone Wars more than, more than Rollies, but I, I would assume like everybody's got their own different nicknames for stuff, right? But I think that some of the universal ones like Clankas, everybody follows. And for those who don't know why they're called Clankas, it's because, well, when they march, right, or when they walk, their feet make a lot of clanking noises. Hence the name Clankers or Clankas. But in the end, Yoda and the clones, of course, they defeat Ventress's army, and King Kachuko decides, I'm gonna join the Republic. One Jedi is not worth a hundred battle droids. More like a thousand. And then Dooku's like, all right, perhaps our negotiations will be more fruitful with your successor. And then Ventress pulls out her lightsabers. And man, this moment, Ventress gets punked out so bad right here. Because oh, she takes out the guards, right? And then she's about to kill the king. And Yoda just is like, nah, fam, not today. And he's like, just puts out his hand, stops her from moving her lightsabers towards his neck. And it's just so funny because like Ventress looks like she's trying so hard to kill this man. And Yoda feels like he's barely even putting in any effort to stop her. Jedi Master Yoda, I am very pleased to meet you at last. Share the feeling I do, King Katunko. 
failed you, Ventress has. Come. Yoda says, strong you are with the dark side, young one. But not that strong. And then just yanks the lightsabers out of her hands with the force. I'm like, oh my god. Strong you are with the dark side, young one. But not that strong. Still much to learn, you have. And then immediately hands them back as well. I'm like, oh, Ventress, you are in a losing battle, girl. Now, Ventress, you know, understanding that she's in a losing situation, planned for something like this, right? And she she sets off a bomb that explodes a bunch of the rocks from the, the cliff, right? And it's very much like Attack of the Clones where Yoda has to hold everything up and move it to the side to save the people that need to be saved. But then the bad guy gets away. Obviously, with Attack of the Clones, it was Dooku. Here, it was Ventress. So I thought it was very, you know, cool. And I, I assure you that it was most likely Dooku that recommended that option to Ventress because he was in that same spot, right? He probably taught her, give yourself a way out, especially with Yoda. He's much more powerful than you. If Ventress would have tried to go up against Yoda with her sabers, she would have lost in like one move. She gets away. Yoda and Dooku have a little bit of a face-off, right? Via the, the hologram. It's a pity I wasn't there in person, my old master. A pity indeed, my fallen apprentice. And then Toydari decides, we're gonna join the Republic. This was a very fun episode. Like, every time I go back and I watch this episode, I just can't help but smile every time I watch it. It's a very fun episode of The Clone Wars. One of the things that I want to do when I talk about these episodes as well is give a shout out to the director and writer of each episode. I'm still trying to figure out my format for how I want to do the show, you guys, so you'll kind of have to bear with me. Like, I know I'm kind of all over the place right now, but... In the next couple weeks, I'm definitely going to get my groove in, and then once I get my groove settled, we are going to be off to the races. But this episode was directed by Dave Bullock and written by Stephen Melching. I also want to give a shout out to the legend Tom Kane for, for his portrayal of Yoda in the, in the Clone Wars. He's also voiced Yoda in other projects as well. I know The Force Unleashed is definitely one of them, along with the Clone Wars micro series as well. Whenever I think of Yoda, like not only do I, I think of the the amazing work that Frank Oz did, but I think of Tom Kane as well. Honestly, same with a lot of the characters as well in, in the Clone Wars, like Count Dooku. Whenever I, I think of Count Dooku, I don't just think Christopher Lee, I think Corey Burton. And as the Clone Wars goes on, you guys, we're gonna have a lot more, you know, crazy discussions about Dooku. Dooku had like a, a role in this episode, but it was like very minimal. This episode was very much about Yoda and about the clones about Ventress, but Dooku definitely had his part to play. So yeah, you guys, I think that's going to wrap us up for this week. Hopefully you guys are staying tuned every single week for a brand new episode of Star Wars Retro Discussions. Every week, a new episode. Every week, new discussions. Every week, some more fun. Make sure you guys are staying tuned and staying tuned for any other content that I got going up on the channel. Make sure you guys like this video, subscribe to the channel, share this video with others to help support the channel. Head over to Top 10 Character Moments and give that channel a subscribe as well. And I will see you guys next time.